My name is Mike Williams, and every morning, the weight of the world seemed to settle on my shoulders. The early morning chill clung to the air as I pedaled through the quiet streets of our small town. The paper route was a necessity, not a choice. My mother, beach-ridden due to illness, depended on me to bring in whatever income I could manage. Dad had left when things got tough, leaving me to navigate a path I never expected. The Thompsons, a kind elderly couple, lived in the house next door. They understood my struggle and became my lifeline in the storm of responsibility. As I folded newspapers before dawn, Mr. Thompson would offer a warm cup of coffee, and Mrs. Thompson would give me a reassuring smile. Mike, you're carrying a heavy load for someone so young, Mr. Thompson remarked one morning, concern etched on his weathered face. I sighed, feeling the weight of my responsibilities. I wish I could go to school, Mr. Thompson, but there's no time. Mom needs the medicine, and the bills keep piling up. Mrs. Thompson, her eyes filled with empathy, placed a hand on my shoulder. You're a good boy, Mike, but don't forget to dream. Life has a funny way of surprising you when you least expect it. Those words lingered in my mind as I set out on my bike, newspapers strapped to the back. Each throw of a paper onto a doorstep felt like a step away from my dreams. Education became a luxury, and my aspirations felt like distant stars in an unreachable galaxy. One day, as I was folding papers on the Thompson's porch, Mr. Thompson handed me an envelope. Consider it a little help, Mike. You're not alone in this. I looked inside to find a few extra dollars. It wasn't just the money. It was the acknowledgement that someone cared. As I rode away that morning, the weight on my shoulders felt a bit lighter, if only for a moment. The Thompson's simple act of kindness was a reminder that even in the darkest times, a glimmer of hope could emerge from unexpected places. The pre-dawn chill bit through my jacket as I pedaled my rusty bike through the quiet streets. The paper route had become a routine, a relentless cycle that mirrored the challenges of my life. The soft thud of newspapers hitting doorsteps echoed in the stillness of the morning. Mr. Thompson had given me a small flashlight to navigate the dimly lit streets. One morning, as I fumbled with the switch, he chuckled from his porch. Mike, you need to aim it at the ground, not the sky. You're waking up the entire neighborhood. I laughed, appreciating the lightness he brought to my early mornings. Sorry about that, Mr. Thompson. Still getting the hang of this. Mrs. Thompson, sipping her coffee by the window, called out, Mike, dear, don't forget to eat. A growing boy like you needs his strength. I nodded gratefully, realizing that their concern went beyond financial support. The Thompsons had become my surrogate family, filling the void left by my absent father. Each house I visited held its own story, its own struggles. The routine of delivering papers became a silent bond between me and the town's early risers. One chilly morning, Mrs. Jenkins, an elderly lady with a perpetual smile, opened her door as I handed her the newspaper. You're a hardworking young man, Mike. What's your secret? I shrugged my breath visible in the cold air. No secret, Mrs. Jenkins, just trying to make ends meet. She reached into her pocket and handed me a piece of candy. Well, don't forget to enjoy the sweetness of life, even when it seems bitter. The simplicity of her words lingered with me as I continued my route. It was a lesson in resilience, a reminder that even in the mundane routine, there were moments of connection and wisdom. As the sun dipped below the horizon, signaling the end of my paper route, I returned to the Thompson's porch. Mrs. Thompson handed me a warm bowl of soup. You must be exhausted, Mike. Take a moment to rest. I sat with them, grateful for the warmth and companionship. In those quiet moments, I found solace, knowing that even in the early mornings and late nights, I wasn't entirely alone. The Thompsons had become my anchors, providing not just financial support, but a sense of belonging that made the weight of responsibility a bit more bearable. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the town slept while I navigated the darkened streets on my bike. The routine of delivering newspapers had become second nature, but my mind craved more than the monotonous rhythm of my daily life. The university, with its majestic buildings and open windows, seemed like an oasis of knowledge, tantalizingly closed yet impossibly distant. One chilly evening, as I paused on my route to steal a glance at a lecture through an open window, a voice startled me. Fascinated by knowledge, young man, I turned to find an elderly janitor, 
his wrinkled face carrying the wisdom of years. Yeah, I admitted, feeling a mixture of embarrassment and longing. I wish I could attend university. The janitor chuckled, his eyes glinting with understanding. Don't let the lack of a formal invitation stop you. Knowledge is free, and sometimes you just need to claim it. His words struck a chord, echoing in my mind as I continued my route. Each night, as I passed the university, I would steal a few moments to peer through open windows. The lectures became a lifeline, a connection to a world I yearned to join. One evening, as I lingered near the physics department, a professor caught my eye. Dr. Turner, an eccentric figure with wild gray hair, approached me. You've been a regular spectator, young man. What brings you here every night? I hesitated, unsure how to explain my desire for knowledge. I can't afford to attend university, but I hunger for learning. Dr. Turner smiled, his eyes twinkling with curiosity. Education shouldn't be a privilege. Come inside and let's see if we can find a way for you to quench that hunger. Under Dr. Turner's guidance, I found myself attending lectures discreetly. The forbidden fruit of knowledge became a shared secret between the professor and me. One day, as we discussed the complexities of quantum physics, Dr. Turner remarked, You have a remarkable mind, young man. It's a shame to see it confined to the shadows. I sighed the weight of my circumstances pressing on me. I appreciate the opportunity, but it feels like a dream I can never truly be a part of. Dr. Turner placed a hand on my shoulder, his gaze unwavering. Dreams are meant to be chased, not forgotten. Keep attending these lectures, and who knows? Maybe one day you'll find yourself on the other side of that classroom. His words were a balm to my restless soul, a glimmer of hope in a world filled with obstacles. The forbidden dreams of a boy on a paper route started to feel a bit more within reach. One evening, the streets were bathed in the amber glow of streetlights as I pedaled through my paper route. The routine was familiar, but that night, the stillness was shattered by a heart-wrenching cry. I followed the sound to a dimly lit alley and found a pregnant woman clutching her swollen belly, tears streaming down her face. A young child stood by her side, looking just as frightened. My instincts kicked in, and I approached cautiously. Hey, are you okay? Do you need help? The woman, Ms. Vivian Garris, nodded between sobs. Something's wrong. I don't know what to do. I hesitated, my lack of medical knowledge a glaring limitation. Still, compassion outweighed uncertainty. I'll call an ambulance. Everything will be okay. As I dialed for help, Ms. Garris managed to speak between gasps. Please, stay with us. I'm scared, and my daughter is terrified. I nodded, promising that I wouldn't leave them alone. The seconds ticked by like hours until the ambulance arrived, the flashing lights casting an eerie glow on the distressed faces. I provided what comfort I could, feeling the weight of responsibility in a situation beyond my control. In the ambulance, Ms. Garris clutched my hand. Thank you for stopping. I don't know what we would have done without you. The child, looking up at me with tearful eyes, whispered, Thank you, mister. As they were rushed into the emergency room, I stood in the cold night air, realizing that life had an uncanny way of thrusting people into our paths. The encounter left an indelible mark on me, a reminder that sometimes stepping into the unknown could lead to unexpected connections. The next day, a bouquet of flowers arrived at the Thompson's doorstep with a heartfelt note from Ms. Garris. To our guardian angel, thank you for being there when we needed it the most. Mr. Thompson, reading the note aloud, smiled warmly. Seems like you've got a knack for being in the right place at the right time, Mike. I chuckled, feeling a mix of humility and gratitude. I just did what anyone would do. Mrs. Thompson, handing me a plate of cookies, replied, Not everyone would, dear. It takes a special kind of person to step up in moments of crisis. As I bit into a cookie, the sweetness lingered on my tongue, a stark contrast to the bitter challenges life often presented. Little did I know that the cry in the dark would be the catalyst for a life-altering connection with the Garris family, shaping the trajectory of my future in ways I couldn't have imagined. The sun had barely dipped below the horizon when the next chapter of my life unfolded. Ms. Vivian Garris, the pregnant woman from the alley, turned out to be more than a passing stranger in distress. Grateful for my help, 
she insisted on introducing me to her father, a university professor, as a token of her appreciation. A few days later, I found myself standing in the Garris family's living room, still feeling like an outsider in their world of elegance and sophistication. Ms. Garris, though visibly tired from the recent events, welcomed me with a warm smile. Mike, meet my father, Professor Garris. The elderly professor, with a kind twinkle in his eyes, extended his hand. Vivian has told me about your selfless act. I'm grateful to you for helping my daughter and granddaughter. I shook his hand, feeling a mix of nervousness and gratitude. I'm just glad I could be there for them. Vivian, with her hand on her belly, added, Mike, you're like our guardian angel. We can't thank you enough. As weeks passed, the Garris family became a part of my life. Despite our different backgrounds, they treated me with kindness and respect. Ms. Garris, now visibly pregnant, often invited me for dinner, insisting that I be a part of their extended family. One evening, as we sat around the dinner table, Professor Garris spoke. Mike, Vivian tells me you're interested in education. Is that true? I hesitated, not used to discussing my aspirations with people who lived in a world so different from mine. Well, I've always wanted to go to university, but life had other plans. Vivian's eyes lit up with understanding. Dad, Mike here sneaks peeks at university lectures during his paper route. Isn't that something? The professor leaned back, studying me thoughtfully. Knowledge has a way of finding those who seek it, Mike. Would you be interested in attending some of my lectures officially? I could arrange for you to sit in. I was taken aback, the offer feeling like a dream I didn't dare entertain. You do that for me. Vivian squeezed my hand. Consider it a small token of our gratitude. You deserve every opportunity, Mike. And just like that, the forbidden dreams of sitting in a university lecture hall became a reality. The Garris family, in their generosity, opened doors that had been closed to me for so long. Little did I know, this newfound connection would be the key to unlocking a world of possibilities, bridging the gap between the life I knew and the dreams I dared to dream. Under the Garris family's wing, I found myself stepping into a world vastly different from my own. Professor Garris, recognizing my passion for learning, extended a surprising offer that would change the trajectory of my life. One afternoon, as I sat in the Garris family's cozy living room, Professor Garris cleared his throat. Mike, Vivian has told me about your love for education. I've been observing your dedication to learning during my lectures. I believe you have the potential for so much more. I shifted uncomfortably in my seat, unused to such attention and consideration. Thank you, Professor. I never thought someone like me could be a part of this world. Vivian, her eyes filled with warmth, chimed in, Dad believes in your potential, Mike. He's offered to mentor you, help you pursue your dreams. I stared at Professor Garris, disbelief evident in my eyes. Mentor me. But I don't have the formal education. I'm just a kid with dreams. The professor leaned forward, his gaze unwavering. Education is not confined to classrooms, Mike. It's a journey of the mind and soul. I see your hunger for knowledge, and I want to help you nourish it. I can provide resources, tutoring, and if you're willing, a better-paying job that will allow you to focus on your studies. I was speechless, the weight of the offer sinking in. Mrs. Thompson, who had been quietly listening, added, Mike, sometimes life surprises us with unexpected opportunities. Don't let this chance slip away. A mix of gratitude and determination welled up within me. I won't, Mrs. Thompson. I'll do whatever it takes. And so my journey as Professor Garris' mentee began. He dedicated time to tutoring me, providing books and materials, and even arranged for a part-time job that allowed me the flexibility to balance work and studies. One evening, as I pored over textbooks, Professor Garris entered the room, a proud smile on his face. Mike, you have a hunger for knowledge that's unmatched. I've never seen a student so dedicated. I looked up, feeling a sense of accomplishment. Thank you, Professor. I never imagined I'd have this opportunity. Vivian, who had become more than just a friend, added, You deserve every bit of it, Mike. We believe in you. Under Professor Garris' guidance, my understanding of the world expanded, and the once forbidden dreams of attending university started to feel within reach. The mentorship wasn't just about academics. It was a journey of personal growth, resilience, and the unwavering belief that education could be a transformative force. Little did I know, 
This newfound support would propel me toward a future I had only dared to dream of. As Professor Garris continued to mentor me, the path to education unfolded before me like a winding river. Navigating this journey wasn't without its challenges, but each obstacle became a stepping stone toward a brighter future. One evening, as I struggled with a particularly challenging assignment, Professor Garris entered the room, a knowing look in his eyes. Mike, education is a journey filled with highs and lows. Don't let the difficulties discourage you. They are the crucible in which your potential is refined. I sighed, the weight of academic pressure heavy on my shoulders. It just feels overwhelming sometimes, Professor. I want to succeed, not just for me, but for my family. The professor placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. Success is not measured by the absence of challenges, but by one's ability to overcome them. You have the resilience, Mike. I believe in you. With Professor Garris' support, the challenges began to feel more like opportunities for growth. He not only provided academic guidance, but also shared stories of his own struggles and triumphs, creating a bond that went beyond the student-mentor relationship. One day, as I walked into the Garris family home, Vivian greeted me with a warm smile. Mike, I've seen the dedication you put into your studies. It's inspiring. How do you manage to balance work and academics? I chuckled, realizing the delicate balance I had struck. It's not easy, Vivian, but the goal keeps me going. I want to be a doctor, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. She nodded, her eyes reflecting admiration. You're on a remarkable journey, Mike. Remember, we're here to support you every step of the way. The support extended beyond the Garris family. Mrs. Thompson, during one of our porch conversations, shared words of encouragement. Mike, education is the key to unlocking doors you never thought possible. Keep pushing forward and you'll see the rewards. The late nights turned into early mornings as I delved into my studies, driven by a sense of purpose. The Garris family became not just mentors, but pillar of strength, providing the stability and encouragement I needed to navigate the challenges of education. As exams approached, Professor Garris offered guidance on effective study techniques, and Vivian ensured I had a quiet space to focus. You're destined for greatness, Mike, she would say, her belief in me unwavering. The journey wasn't without sacrifices, but each sacrifice felt like an investment in a brighter future. The support of my mentors and the Thompsons became the bedrock of my perseverance. One day, as I received news of a scholarship to medical school, the joy and relief were palpable. I rushed to share the news with the Garris family, who welcomed me with open arms. Vivian, tears of pride in her eyes, hugged me tightly. Mike, you did it. We knew you could. Professor Garris, smiling with paternal pride, added, This is just the beginning, Mike. Your journey is far from over, and I'll continue to support you every step of the way. The path to education was not a solitary one. It was a collective effort, fueled by the belief that knowledge could be a transformative force, breaking the chains of circumstance and unlocking doors to a future filled with promise. The day of my medical school graduation felt surreal, a culmination of years of hard work, sacrifice, and unwavering support. As I stood in my cap and gown, the weight of the academic regalia felt lighter than the dreams that had once seemed impossible. The Garris family, the Thompsons, and a few friends gathered in a crowded auditorium, their smiles reflecting a pride I felt within. Professor Garris, in his academic robes, approached me with a twinkle in his eye. Mike, you've overcome obstacles that would have deterred many. Today, you stand not just as a graduate, but as a symbol of resilience. I shook his hand, feeling a mix of gratitude and accomplishment. None of this would have been possible without your guidance, Professor. I can't thank you enough. Vivian, holding her newborn in her arms, beamed at me. Mike, you're not just a doctor. You're our family. We're so proud of you. As we celebrated at the Thompson's house, Mr. Thompson raised his glass. To Mike, a young man who turned dreams into reality, your journey has been an inspiration to us all. I looked around the room, filled with faces that had become my pillars of strength. Mrs. Thompson, handing me a slice of cake, said, Mike, you've brought joy and success into our lives. It's a pleasure to see you standing tall today. The journey from a paper route to a medical degree felt like a lifetime, and yet, it had only just begun. Professor Garris, in a quieter moment, pulled me aside. Mike, 
This is not the end. I've watched you grow, and I believe you have the potential to achieve even greater things. Never forget the journey that brought you here. The sentiment was echoed by Vivian as she hugged me. Mike, the world needs more compassionate and resilient individuals like you. Use your knowledge to make a difference. The support didn't end with graduation. Professor Garris, true to his word, continued to mentor me as I navigated the complexities of residency and beyond. The Garris family, the Thompsons, and the lessons learned during my paper route became the foundation upon which I built a fulfilling and impactful career. One day, as I treated a patient at the hospital, Professor Garris visited. Mike, you're doing exceptional work. I always knew you had the potential to make a difference in people's lives. I smiled, realizing the ripple effect of the support I had received. Thank you, Professor. I couldn't have done it without you. As the years passed, I established myself as a respected physician, and the dreams that once seemed unattainable became my reality. The Garris family, the Thompsons, and the town that had witnessed my struggles were never forgotten. In moments of reflection, I recalled the early mornings, the late nights, and the cry in the dark that had set my journey in motion. Mrs. Thompson, now a dear friend, visited me at the hospital one day. Mike, you've come a long way from that paper route. How does it feel to see your dreams realized? I gazed out the hospital window, a sense of fulfillment settling within. It feels like I've not only fulfilled my own dreams, but also carried the dreams of those who believed in me. The journey was tough, but it was worth every step. And so, the boy who once faced hardship and prejudice, who found solace in stolen glimpses of university lectures, stood as a beacon of hope and achievement. The dream realized was not just mine, but a testament to the power of resilience, mentorship, and the belief that education could transform lives.